Game seven, do or die. A trip to the Western Conference final on the line. Could you ask for anything more? It's winner take all. The Wild have clawed their way back into another one game playoff. This is a very dangerous Wild team. Is this no name group a team of destiny? Or can Canuck superstars Todd Bertuzzi and Marcus Naslund get back on track? And can Dan Cloutier bounce back? You know they are watching in Anaheim. Win or go home. NHL tonight, now. Holy shnikey. Alongside uh, Barry Morrows, I'm John Butchergrass, and I, before the playoffs began, Barry, I told the uh, people of Minnesota. That you would wear it. If they beat Colorado, I told them they it. would wear it. So at some point during the show, I will don. You better get it on, man. Minnesota, well, I, I promise. I, I can't not now. And, and if we get to the finals, I expect Lou Nanny to show us a good time on his golf course there. So, Lou, if we're there. AT on Lou? Oh, yeah, no problem. Right. We'll pick up everything. But still one major step to go. <laughs> the words of Minnesota's Andrew Brunette. We get to play one game. If you asked us at the start of the series if we want a one-game series, we would have taken it. Game 7 in Vancouver between the Canucks and the Wild. The winner advances to the conference final and play host to the Anaheim Muddy Ducks starting Saturday. A victory by the Wild will put the third-year team in a class all by itself. No team has overcome two 3-1 series deficits in the same postseason. And here we go. What a great atmosphere as usual in Vancouver. And as we expected very right from the get-go, the Canucks feed off this energy, and they come out attacking. They did in game six. They dominated the first period. Could have been up two or three nothing, and they did tonight also. Marcus Maslin was very effective. Bertuzzi played his best period of the playoffs. They were all over all of a sudden. He bent, but he didn't break, as Brian Ing once said many times. Anti Laxon just throws it at the end, and it dips on Dan Kluche. Tough situation for Kluche in that building, coming from two subpar performances. The people there want to cheer for him, but he's got to give them a reason to cheer for him. Boom, Rudy Poo time. Bertuzzi starting to throw his weight around, Barry. Bertuzzi was very effective. He was aggressive. He made some good plays with the puck, and he was around the puck all night long, which he hasn't been. Jason Marshall thought he had one there. It didn't happen. Then late in the first. Oh, it goes behind Rollison. No score after 20, Barry. He didn't have a stick because Bertuzzi had knocked it out of his hands very close to getting a penalty for a slash. But there's only two seconds left in the period, and they got out of their unscathed. To the second period of Game 7, Matias Olin, score! Barry Moore on this. Bit of a screen job, 1-0 Vancouver. Defense again, supplying all the offense for the Vancouver Canucks. That has to change. A rare breakdown again, Barry. We'll talk about that in a minute. Todd Bertuzzi, at this point, it looked like it was all over for the Wild. 2-0 well, Vancouver. You've you got to think that's a sign. Bertuzzi getting a goal, first one of the series, and a beautiful goal at that to make it 2-0. You've got to think the Wild are going to fold now. Late second, 2-0. And how big is this? I mean, this is the wild. It goes over the net, Barry, in midair, Pascal Dupuy. This is the game. If they went into the third period 2-0, I don't think they would have came out with the energy they did. As far as I'm concerned, that was the game, Dupuy's goal. To the third. Gaberick was quiet in this game. As usual, Wes Walls was not. Naslin came back, did not pick up anybody, got lazy, wide open net for Walls. So it's 2-2. Five minutes left in game seven. Wild at center with Park leading the rush back in. Three on two. Back for Hendricks. He scores! Darby Hendrickson scores! Oh, Bob Kurtz and Minnesota are loving it. They're up by one. Looking for more. But watch Tom Bertuzzi. Boom! Clear interference on Zuzan. Pushes him into Rollison. Rollison injured on the ensuing power play. Insurance. Pasquale Dupuy out to the Henderson go-ahead call and look at Brian Burke. And this is unbelievable. Brent Sopel and the Canucks are shocked. Canucko heads on this night, Barry. Everybody's shocked. It was a bad penalty by Bertuzzi. We talked about how well he played tonight, but you can't do something like that at that time in the game. Second team in NHL history to win a pair of Game 7s on the road. The only other team ever to win two Game 7s on the road in the same playoff season, those 71 Canadiens when Kenny Dryden came up and shocked the world then. Up next for Minnesota is Anaheim, and yes, they have home ice advantage in the Western Conference Final. First two goals of the series for Pasquale Dupuy. He scores the first, he scores the last. Back to Vancouver and Dave Strait.
No team in NHL history has won two Game 7s in the same playoff year using two different goalies until this year. Dwayne, you won it tonight. Uh, how did it feel against this Vancouver team that was very physical against you in particular? Yeah, it's, it's great. To, anytime you get a win in, in the playoffs, um, we're just lucky to be here. Manny, Manny stole one for us in uh, Colorado to give us a chance to, to continue on our, our season, and, and hopefully now we can um, do that against Anaheim. A lot of people question whether this rotating goalie system could work. Obviously, you guys have to get along to make it work. Yeah, we, we get along pretty good. Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of fun between us. We have a lot of fun, and we joke around a lot, so I think that's uh, the best part about it. We're able to keep each other loose. Manny, you set the stage with the huge upset over Patrick Waugh and the Colorado Avalanche. Was it tougher playing in that game or watching this one? Uh, I think they felt just about the same. Uh, the dress room, everybody just uh, getting around you. It's it's great feeling. I think you know it's it's good that Rolly goes uh, through it. I, I really enjoyed my uh, my game, my game seven, and uh, it's it's great that Rolly's been through it. I think we uh, we uh, kind of left uh, left left it off to each other and uh, you know you always look on the bench and you know the other guy can play just as well as you can and we completed each other you know like Rolly said first series kind of was tough to get through and then the guy started playing I got lucky and then uh, you know Rolly's been playing great in this series so it's kind of being the rotation but you're <laughs> you're talking about asking questions I think most of all I think we're kind of wondering about this ourselves but it's worked out great so all right Manny Dwayne congratulations on making history let's send it back to the studio Thanks, David. The Wild become the 19th team in NHL history to rally from a 3-1 deficit, but the first to do so twice in the same playoff season to show you how much the momentum changed in this matchup among those 19 teams. Only the 92 Canucks beat their opponents by a greater margin in the final three games of the series. So up next for the Wild oh, Anaheim. Oh, didn't okay. Jerry Maguire say you complete me? What they just said, didn't they say we complete each other? Wasn't that in Tom the Jerry Cruise? Yeah, yeah, Tom Cruise? Yeah, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't that movie. Uh, but I think it was a woman involved, <laughs> Tom Cruise. But anyway, uh, so we've up next now is Anaheim, Minnesota. More on the Western Conference final coming up. But, Barry, let's talk about the Minnesota Wild. A, a defensive team, of course, yeah. a great structure. But there was one moment in this game where they kind of had miscommunication. That's why I thought this game was going Vancouver's way. Bertuzzi scores, Olin gets a goal from the point, and they had a couple breakdowns defensively the Minnesota Wild, and that never really happens. I want to go over it quickly just to show you folks at home now. You're going to watch what happens. Sofal has the puck. Now, he's an offensive defenseman. He starts walking the line. Now, that is Stevenson. When Sofal walks the line, Stevenson goes with him, and they play man-on-man -man coverage. Now, Olin comes across, changes position with Sopo. Now Gabrick right there has to come across and play Olin. No problem, you just switch positions. Now watch what happens. Sopo gives it across to Olin. Stevenson goes across with Sopo, stays on Sopo. Olin's wide open. And why is he wide open? Because Gabrick did not read the coverage, did not read the switch, and leaves Olin wide open. He walks to the top of the circles, has a great slap shot. That does not happen very often for the Minnesota Wild. I'm sure they'll go over tomorrow when they're looking at tape. So that's something to look for if they continue to do that. Jock will talk to Gabbard says, when he comes across Stevenson with his man, you read that and you switch and you go over with your defenseman. Small breakdown, but at the time it looked like it was going to be a game changer. And we saw those Canucks defensemen back uh, up speed, late in the game. Speed, we're, those, they're so fast the Minnesota Wild, so underrated the speed. Walls can fly, Park can fly, uh, Laxanen can fly. Uh, they're just so, so, uh, Gabbard, maybe the fastest yeah. guy in the NHL. And in the third period, the Vancouver defense are backing in, backing in, backing in. The one shot by Zoltak him in the face, mm -hmm. top of the circles, and then finally the goal by Hendrickson was the same place, top of the circles. All right, so again, coming up on the NHL tonight, the Western Conference Final Preview will break down Anaheim against Minnesota. Coming up here, wait to hear what Pat Burns' prediction on the Eastern Conference Final is as his Devils prepare to open up with Ottawa. Also, with all of her ducks in a row, a row of ducks, visit Jimmy Kimmel Live. If you missed it, we'll show it to you. This is NHL Tonight. In 1935, Foxwood Farm started with one horse and a truck. The horse was a thoroughbred. The truck, a Chevy Suburban. Today, they have a few more horses. But there's still only one truck. Chevy Suburban. With an available 8.1 liter Vortec engine, it's capable of towing up to six tons, making it the best Suburban yet. Chevy Suburban, like a rock. All right, it's between you guys. Best bartender gets the job. After you. Oh, boy. Yeah. The bad blue, please. I've got this one. 
Canada's finest. Thanks. Look up, see blue, Labatt Blue. Is it hot in here or is it just him? Self-denial is total for Chef Jimmy of Quiznos. Hello? You don't know me, but I hear you're hot. Is this about the peppers? Peppers? Until his search for the perfect peppers leads to the triumph of the ultimate spicy sub. Everything else must be put on hold. The Spicy Monterey Club with Chef Jimmy's three pepper chili sauce. Mm, 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 mm. Toasty. See the most phenomenal international athletes. Holy McTwist! From six world regions compete at the first ever X Games Global Championship. Beginning May 17th on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC Sports. Every day, an important sports story is breaking. Not a score, not a stat, but a buzz that's about to get louder. Beginning Monday, May 12th, Outside the Lines debuts in a new nightly format. Join me each weeknight, midnight Eastern, after Sports Center. An emotional Patrick Schelberg informed Ducks GM Brian Murray that, quote, he had no choice but to immediately return to his native Sweden. Quote, he told me he had some personal issues, major family issues, that he had to look after, Murray said Wednesday, announcing that Schelberg has left the team and is not likely to return. Schelberg told Murray that he had planned to retire after this season anyway. Meanwhile, the rest of the Ducks are finding ways to stay busy, waiting for the Western Conference Final to begin against the Minnesota Wild, like appearing on ABC's Jimmy Kimmel live Wednesday night. I'm your announcer, Paul Freya, with Mike LeClaire and John Sebastian Jaguar of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Now here's Jimmy Kimmel. That's a good job. I tell you, Paul, it's a great job. Uh, four years in Maine gets you, not even four years in Maine. He's a very intelligent man. Yeah, he is a smart guy. Okay, so Barry, we have the two, two lowest scoring teams who made the playoffs in the Western Conference. All these teams have scored well over yep. 250 goals, but it's the people who score the fewest goals who are in the final. Anaheim against Minnesota. Let's start with Anaheim. And of course, when you start with them, you start with their goaltender who was on Jimmy Kimmel Live, G.S. Shaguer. Well, defense wins. It's proven over and over again. Goaltending wins. It's proven over and over again. It's not Patrick Juan. It's not Balfour. And it's not those guys anymore. It's a guy called J.S. Shaguer, a French Canadian goaltender, 25 years old, late developer spent some time in different organizations but right now he is on fire maybe the hottest goaltender in the playoffs so far when you beat the Detroit Red Wings four straight and you beat the Dallas Stars in six games and your power play your penalty killing shuts down those power plays goaltending is a big part of it Keith Carney is a leader on defense he'll play against the other team's top lines so that means he's going to see a lot of Marion Gabor coming up in the next series he's just a tower of strength back there he's physically he also plays some power play time so he plays a ton of minutes Another guy I love is Steve Ruch, and he'll be playing against uh, Gabryk, too. He also can score some goals when there's a breakdown. He's a leader also, big physical forward. Now, why is the Ducks so tough to play against? Well, who do you shut down? Paul Korea is not even one of their top scorers. Leclerc scores big goals. Uh, Stevie Thomas, they got at the deadline, scores big goals. Krogh scores big goals. Sandus Ozelinch is playing some of his best hockey he's played since uh, 96 when he was with the Colorado Avalanche. Everybody's contributing offensively, everybody's contributing defensively, and you got the great goaltender. And psychologically, it's a very interesting series because these two teams are yep. now not major underdogs. In fact, Minnesota had more wins than Anaheim during the regular season. Both had 95 points, so it's hard to sell well, who should win and who shouldn't. Cliff Ronning already started, and he said well, we're the underdog again against <laughs> the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, and, and they're close in points, they're close in wins, uh, but the Ducks may, paid a lot more. Again, Minnesota is still the lowest payroll team uh, to make the playoffs. And probably bad news for the Wild. They have home ice advantage. They of course, they're not very good at home. Uh, two and four at home uh, this postseason. Meanwhile, Minnesota, of course, they have a very different goaltending situation. <laughs> yes. And J.S. Shiguera, the clear number one. Barry, we have two goaltenders. Rolison the start of Minnesota's first four playoff games. Been the man in five of the last six. Of course, Fernandez won the last three against Colorado. So is it pretty much Rolison? He'll start the series, I'm sure. If he loses game one, back to Fernandez in game two. Actually, Fernandez's numbers are much better better than Rolison's, believe it or not, and they've each won a Game 7, so they can both handle pressure. Rolison will get to start, no doubt about it, the way he's playing. I think he could use a little bit of rest, so obviously that groin is not 100%, but he is playing great. He's weathered two really tough first periods against Vancouver in Game 6 and Game 7. Probably the turning point in the game is how well he played in Game 6. He's a battler, doesn't matter, he's not worried about save percent, he's not worried about goals against, and I said it's not how many you save, it's when you save. If he's big in net and he's physical in net, he can take the offensive pounding. Fernandez, again, coming in where he did, was a great competitor, and he won a Game 7 against Colorado. 
Gabbert is their offensive star, no doubt about it. He's leading the playoffs in scoring. Everything revolves around him. He got two assists in game six. Wasn't quite as effective tonight. I love this guy, Brunette. He's the leader. He's the guy that makes things happen on the power play. He sets up behind that net. He takes a physical pounding in front of the net. And I really think in the dressing room, he's the guy that does a lot of talking. Wes Walls is one of those speedsters we've talked about. Came out of nowhere. Couldn't get a job in the NHL before the Wild picked him up. He can fly. He scored short-handed goals. He scored power play goals. They have everything. Turning point in this series has been the power play of Minnesota. Vancouver started taking bad penalties again, and when they did, the Minnesota power play really kicked it into gear. Everybody contributes. Kuba scores, Dupuis scores, uh, Ronning scores. Uh, everybody spreads the wealth around. This is a team just like Anaheim. Who do you shut down on Anaheim? Who do you shut down besides it? Gaborik? on the uh, Minnesota Wild. Very, very similar teams, and it's going to be a great series. So Anaheim beats some number one and number two seeds. Minnesota takes care of the number three and number four uh, seeds. Yep. Three and four. So uh, it's unbelievable yes, it that is. we have Anaheim or Minnesota. Either way, there's going to be a, a major shindig on the story in the Stanley Cup final, either the third year Wild or the improbable Ducks. It all begins on ESPN. Saturday night, game one, 7 Eastern, for Pacific, the Ducks and the Wild on ESPN. You gotta believe, and Mr. Burns does. After calling the Ottawa Senators, quote, the perfect hockey club, Burns told the Ottawa Sun, we'll win. And when it was suggested that the Devils have had an easy draw, Pat Burns replied, quote, I don't think they, Ottawa, have had a very tough se series either. Of course, Pat Burns, always a very honest man. Barry, you went up against him, of course, in 93, LA against Toronto. Yep. Um, is, he, is he trying to instill his team with confidence? you think there's any part of his team that doubts it going against the powerful Ottawa Senators? If you're scared to mention the Stanley Cup, there's no way you're ever going to win it. And I think that's what a coach has to do. He has to say, go out on a limb, say, we're going to win this series. Uh, Ottawa was a team to finish first. New Jersey finished second. Certainly doesn't have the glory guys of the Ottawa Senators with Hosa and Havlitt and Alfredson and Bonk and all those players. But they're a real team. And I think it's good for Pat to stand up and say, hey, we're maybe not as talented as they are, but we are going to win. Because we've just seen the Western Conference folks talent does not mean you're going to win games. It's about heart. It's about courage. Scott Stevens coming back from that injury, playing the next night and playing so well. That is what wins you series this time of year. Uh, they're rested. Same with Ottawa, so that's not a factor. But I love it when a coach has the guts to come out in the press and say, we're going to win. This team is great, and we're going to find a way to go on to the Stanley Cup Finals. Okay. That series Doc all... Martin should do the exact same thing. That series begins, of course, on Saturday afternoon. More on that in a moment. The Ontario Superior Court could approve the sale of the Ottawa Senators to pharmaceutical billionaire Eugene Melnick as early as Friday. The Ottawa citizen has learned that Melnick reached a tentative separate agreement for the Corral Center on Tuesday. The total package for the team and the arena is between 130 and 150 million dollars. Ottawa, I make that Ontario Superior Court Justice James Chadwick will consider a formal deal for the hockey club on Friday. So the Sens could have their owner in place in time for game one on ABC. 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific. The Devils and the Senators Eastern Conference Final Game 1 on ABC. All right, Barry, we had our fourth Game 7 of the 2003 playoffs, won by the Wild. Which current NHL broadcaster played in the most Game 7 wins in NHL history without suffering a loss? Play Clement. Clement, hands to cement. Chris Conroy, all check. K-Swiss. Here we go, y'all. Part two. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. Let me introduce the K-Swiss Nito. You can rock anywhere, anytime that you'll be seen, yo. With a flip of the wrist and a twist, you get a whole new vibe from K-Swiss that I'll never miss. Classic style with a new school twist. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. Introducing Intel Centrino mobile technology. The new wireless laptop technology designed to help you untangle, unburden, and unwire your life. So, do you, do you hate baseball? No, I like baseball. I just never understood how you guys could spend so much time discussing it. 
I mean, I've been to games, but I don't memorize who played third base for Pittsburgh in 1960. Don Hoke. Don Hoke. Beat you. Baseball tonight. All season long on ESPN and ESPN2. You are cordially invited to a college graduation, your own graduation. It will be held a lot sooner than you think. Because at University of Phoenix Online, you can earn your bachelor's or master's degree in the most efficient way possible. Invest in your career and personal earning potential with a state-of-the-industry degree. Attend class whenever and wherever you want via the Internet. Most students earn their degree in just two to three years. Designed for working adults, University of Phoenix is the largest private accredited university in the U.S. We offer degrees in business, e-business, management, IT, marketing, accounting, education, criminal justice, health care, and more. Call now to explore your career options with a trained counselor. The consultation is free and could be life-changing. Accept our invitation to your success. University of Phoenix Online. Call for free information now. Call 800-545-6042. Okay, Clement, ESPN, Chris, Nashville, Predators, Steve Conroy, Columbus Blue Jackets, NEO, Pittsburgh Penguins. I'll say Terry Chris. That's who they announced for now. And Bingo, Barry! I was, that's good, because I have been on a cold streak. Color analyst with Pete Weber of Nashville. Perfect 6-0 in his playing career. All right, Barry, American League playoffs. Here's Marcel Hosa, brother of Marion. He'll be in the NHL next year, no doubt about Hamilton it. Hamilton Bulldogs up 3-2 on Manitoba. They were up 3-1. Oh. Benoit Graton, nice backhand pass. Tommy Samalayan's first goal in the playoffs. And Fedor Fedorov, Sergei's brother, with the puck. He played with the Canucks early on in the season. First goal of the playoffs, Manitoba down 2-1. Then Chris Nielsen. To Nico Yokola, Barry. What do you got at Nico Yokola? That uh, sounds like a European, John. First goal of the playoffs, tied at three. I'd probably say a fan. He grew up in bed stop. Later third, 3-3. Three, three. Tyler Bach, slap shot saved by Eric Bischoff. Still, still playing. That Kavanaugh bangs on the rebound. Manitoba forces a game seven. All right, Barry, it's not all about money. It's, it's not about nothing teamwork, about money. Teamwork, hard work, and defense. 22 of the 23 highest paid NHLers have a seat in front of their TVs for the remainder of the season. Only Paul Curry, who pulls in 10 million per, the only member still playing. Korea makes about half the entire Minnesota Wild team. You think some owner, owners are maybe doing some thinking out there? I think they should think about teamwork and defense first. ESPN's original entertainment series this season presents part two of its look inside the Detroit Red Wings. Narrated by 24 star and avid hockey fan Kiefer Sutherland, the season part two takes viewers on a hour long emotional roller coaster through the second half of the 2002 2003 season in Hockey Town. From the Wings' fourth straight 100 point season to their abrupt playoff elimination. Here's an excerpt. You know, when you're the defending Stanley Cup champions, life ain't that easy. You're on top. Everybody wants to see you fall. Everybody wants what you have. Good test for us here. What do you say? Don't stop on him. He gave it right to Pucks. Make sure we stick together, hang together, and are smart about it over composure at all times. Not part of the time, at all times. Come on, good job. Here we go, Chowdy. Put it in, boys. He took a run at me. Brett Hall gets his 700. You guys can jump on Hull's bandwagon, but I'm with Dan <laughs> The CD release party in the debut of the fantastic band known as... Grinder! Clang, clang, rada bing bang, and make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rada bing bang, and make my noise all day. Hey, that's an assist for Jake. You got a helper, so that's plus one, that's good. He did something, so he didn't get skunked. We always come here. It's very close to our houses, so it's easy. I'm on the Iserman diet. Eat anything you want. If we were gonna trade, I'd take shit, Nick. He hits. There's lots on the market right now. We'd give you a second. We just, we need the depth. Too much. Hey, Scotty. I think so. It's an all or nothing situation here in Detroit. Uh, we have nothing. 
Well, that's good. The season part two debuts Friday night, 7.30 on ESPN. It can also be seen 2 o'clock on Sunday on ESPN. Back out now to Vancouver. Jacques Lemaire, head coach of the Wild. His team is in the Western Conference Final. I won't focus on the other side. You take advantage of it. You get a goal, which is a huge goal. You get a goal from uh, an average player. You get a goal from a guy that gets two in a year. You know, it seems like everything works for us. Well, uh, like I said, I was, uh, I was, I remember at that time, I was telling them, I said, we can't do anything well if we don't pass on the, uh, pass the puck on the stick. I said, we're not skating, we're taking the puck, give it back to them. We have to be a little stronger, make the right play with the puck, and, and start to skate. If we don't do that, there's, nothing's going to happen here. And then, uh, for some reason, I don't know why. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't ask, I don't know. And, and the first goal was a strange one. I mean, it, it bounces over yeah. up to Yeah, I thought, um, you know, I thought at that time there, I said, uh, we've been uh, having the bounces last couple of games. I said, oh, no, not tonight. Don't tell me in a game like this they'll start to get the bounces. But, uh, you know, it turned around. All right, here it is, game one, Ducks and Wild on ABC, 3 o'clock Eastern. Anaheim, Minnesota, 3 o'clock Eastern, ABC, ESPN2, Devil Sense. ESPN HD, sponsored by Phillips and Best Buy. Drinks before lunch? Uh, water's fine for me. Uh, water for me, too, but with lemon, please. I'll have a Sam Adams, please. Mm. Make that two Sam Adams. Samuel Adams, always a good decision. Does anyone have a better 99 cent value menu than Wendy's? Well, we haven't seen one. The super value menu at Wendy's. It's better here. the science of insulation, roofing, siding, sound control, and more. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning, innovations for living. All mom wants this spring is a little more time with the family. Good luck. That's why there's the America's Choice National Family Share Plan from Verizon Wireless. It lets you share unlimited night and weekend minutes on up to four separate lines. And right now, you can buy a full-color Motorola T720 phone for just $79.99 after rebate. It's the perfect gift for someone special in your family, like Mom. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Can you hear me now? Good. What Barry Bonds is doing at his age is just plain stupid. The best player in baseball shouldn't be nearly 40. Rome is burning. Tuesdays at 7 Eastern. Jim Rome is back on ESPN. I promised. Yes, you did. Wild in the conference final. What a seven-game series it was with Vancouver. Here's a synopsis. start to boil over. This is all sorts of message sending. And right away, we've got a scrap. Cameron snaps the shot, scores! Danielson scores! 
He gets nailed by Bertuzzi. Sobel again, scores! It's tied at two. Sobel one time, scores! He scores! Cliff running! Down to the back, he scores! What a play by Burnett! Heating up on the NBA tonight. The Mavs try to avoid getting crowned again by the Kings. 